So we know that in the case of MQ, we have a message and we are now going to look at this in a little bit more detail. So think of this in terms of the old world of message, sending out messages. There are essentially two parts. The first part is the envelope itself. So think of this as the stamp uh, kind of envelope in the paper world where you have your return address and you have your send uh, your recipient address or your your destination here right and your return address information here and then separately you have the body of your message which is here and in the case of a business uh, message may have your sender listed first and then maybe the recipient here and then you know the body of the message is the point and essentially you have of course two parts so what is the first part well it's pretty clearly the header you could call it or you could call it the envelope right because it's the, not the actual body it's just the envelope is explaining the contents but it's not the actual contents you could also call that metadata because that's essentially what it is it's not the data it's the data about the data and then you separately have the body of the message and that's actually of course the content the real data in the message well you're probably pretty familiar with that and of course what we've done up until now is call this you know the MQ system but what we haven't really done is looked at this in terms of HTTP which is essentially exactly the same thing and what do I mean by that well say that for example you're going to google.com in the case of google.com or really yeah, most web pages actually what you are actually doing, what your, what your client is doing, the client being the thin client or your web browser, is first sending out your request headers. So you are requesting the page. And when you are requesting the page, you do that with headers. Well, we just saw that, right? These are the headers of our message. And that's exactly what you're doing in the case of loading a web page. Well, the same thing applies when the server responds back, right? So this is our client. This is our web browser. And then we have our server out here, Google, of course. And then we're requesting, we're, we are requesting. So that's us down here, right? We're sending out our requests, so that looks like this. And then the server is replying back. And all of that is done or controlled by these headers. So this is the response up here. And this was our initial request. And you can see what these look like, uh, right? You see the host name. This is, again, it's metadata. It's what's the host? And who is the user agent, right? We have Mozilla Firefox, or at least a, a, a variant of it. And, you know, who, who are we sending it to? And, and all, this, all this basic information that we just discussed. So you can think of, and in fact, this is exactly how it works. You can think of HTTP as an envelope system or a messaging system it is encapsulating the data of the body inside this sort of envelope out here so of course you could also call this just a document because that's of course what it is and then separately you've heard of something called soap or simple object access protocol and something else called rest or representational state transfer and both of these things are what are known as web services and this is important because you will see later especially once we get into the IIB and MQ interaction uh, videos that rest and soap are really important to the broker but in any case for now the question is well how does soap and how does rest how is that represented and what we drew here and it turns out that like we have shown, in the case of SOAP, the header of our message here stays essentially the same. It doesn't change. It's still standard HTTP. But the body of that message changes. So remember earlier, we had, we had our content looking something along these lines. Well, now what happens is, in the case of SOAP, you have essentially another message, one that looks like that, embedded in the body of the HTTP. So what does that look like? 
Well, essentially, you're going to have something like this. You're going to have your metadata here. And then separately, you're going to have your, your document listed here. So this is essentially what we had looked at before. It's just that we have this separate message inside the body. And this is typical of SOAP. And that's sometimes referred to as a kind of RPC or remote procedure call approach. But the important thing is to just realize that it's inside the body itself. So that is the case of SOAP. Now, what happens in the case of REST? Well, in the case of REST, things change just a little bit, but not too much. So essentially, what happens in the case of these exchanges with REST is that the HTTP and the header and HTTP body are used the way you would sort of expect. There's no nesting going on. That doesn't happen. Instead, the header, which remember, includes things like the verbs. So things like put, verbs being the HTTP method. So put and get and post, these sorts of things are used to represent the action that you want to perform on the server itself. And then the body is exactly what you would expect. It's the payload. So the actual content. So you might have some XML document uh, listed like that. Now, these sorts of things matter because SOAP is the older of the two technologies and REST is much newer. And that matters because depending on what you're trying to do, and you'll see this uh, a little bit in more detail later. If you're inside IIB and you're trying to connect two systems, say an older system and a newer system, and you're trying to do that with IIB or a, an enterprise service bus like that, like IIB that does this brokering sort of translation, then it's important to know to choose the right technology. You may need to use SOAP or you may need to use REST or you may need to use both depending on what your goals are and what the technologies are involved. And it's also important to note that Google used to have a search interface that was based on SOAP, and then it deprecated that in favor of REST. So these elements are important to keep in mind depending on what you are trying to develop and depending on what's maybe already been developed.